Hello, Assalamu alaikum and very good morning from Lahore. I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. And as we're discussing thanatology, and in thanatology, we're discussing latages. And from the previous lecture, we have started discussion on putrefaction. And in this lecture, the learning objective will be that I will be discussing the stage one of putrefaction. And the stage one is basically characterized by the color changes which are appearing on the skin, we observe them, and the marbling, marbling also a phenomena which is shown by the color changes in the blood vessels, and the skin slip and blistering formation. So starting with the stage one, the color changes. Externally, the greenish discoloration over the cecum and the flanks, that is the right iliac fossa, is the first sign which appears as a sign of putrefaction. So when we observe that there is greenish discoloration at the right alicosa, we confirm that the putrefaction has set in. And this is the first sign, which is the indicator of entry of body into putrefaction. So that putrefaction has started. This greenish discoloration gradually spreads to the whole abdomen and then the color gradually changes from greenish to black color. And this is because of combined combination of hemoglobin with self-met hemoglobin, hydrogen sulfide, that is hemoglobin combined with hydrogen sulfide and there is formation of self-met hemoglobin. So this is the greenish discoloration of putrefaction, which is the first sign. So first sign of putrefaction is the appearance of greenish discoloration of the lower abdominal skin, especially in the right alicosa. It appears on the second or third day, usually after death, but it may appear as early as after 24 hours in hot weather. And if the temperature is further hot and infection is due to some infective disease, death is due to infective disease, then this process may further hasten up. Usually seen first on the right side of the abdomen over the cecal area, where the contents of the bowel are fluid and they are abundant bacteria. And this is the weakest part of the gut and the contents are in fluid form and it is easier for the bacteria to invade from here. So that's why it starts from the right alicosa where cecum is located and the contents are fluid form, wall is very thin, and it is easier for bacteria to invade. So the basic rule for further progression of putrefaction is that the organ, who are to first putrefy? The organs having a rich blood supply and near to the source of bacteria, they are first to putrefy. And this is the greenish discoloration on the flank, right side then spreading to the abdomen. And this is a diagrammatic representation of the process. The blood, there is hemolysis and liberation of hemoglobin and bacteria. They produce hydrogen sulfide, which combine with the hemoglobin and there is formation of self-met hemoglobin. And this is the cause of greenish, disc greenish discoloration. And this then diffuses into the tissues. No marbling. Marbling is basically the veins which become prominent on the chest, shoulder, and groin, and a bluish or greenish network that is known as marbling. So this arborescent pattern or network of prominent greenish color or bluish color veins that is known as marbling. And in CN of the veins shows that veins are filled with gas bubbles and hemolyzing RBCs. And this marbling is due to diffusion of the hemoglobin into surrounding tissues along the line of superficial veins. And this is how it appears, the arborescent pattern of veins this is another picture. 
Now the skin slip, which is on the third and fourth day. But these all time period depend upon the temperature and the condition of the body. And this is a rough estimation. It can appear early, it can be delayed. So the skin slip is that outer layer of the skin, it becomes loosened. Although skin is apparently normal, but its surface layer can be rubbed off easily with even slight pressure. And even the slightest pressure will denude and the superficial layer will be rubbed off. And leaving behind a moist pink base, this process is known as skin slip. And this condition must be differentiated from the scales or antimortem abrasion. Scales are the burns because of hot fluids and abrasions are because of the uh, mechanical injury. So this can be easily decided because there will be no vital reaction on the skin slip or output defective, but will be difficult to differentiate from postmortem scales. Postmortem scale is immediately after death, the hot fluid is thrown, it may show a little moist and reddish area. So then again, we do the microscopy and histology, histology will differentiate the uh, antimortem nature of the scale or the postmortem nature. So the skin from the hands and feet may peel off in the form of gloves or stocking. And it is very helpful are getting the fingerprints. And this is the uh, skin slip phenomenon. You can see here, it's more advanced. So these are various pictures showing the uh, skin slip and the fingerprints are, have been taken. Now the blistering. Blisters are also formed on the skin surface, which are incompletely filled with blood-stained watery fluid with poop defective odor. Blisters are, but they are filled with gas and poop defective fluid. They are not the burn blisters. They burst easily, leaving behind a same kind of slippery skin surface as in skin slip. The gases like methane, ammonia, phosphorated hydrogen, carbon dioxide, which are responsible for the offensive odor of the putrefaction. So the difference between the true blister, that is the antimortem or the postmortem putrefactive blister is that, that the antimortem are, uh, the true blisters are antimortem, whereas the putrefactive are postmortem and they appear two to three days after death. The vital reaction is present in true blisters, whereas it is not present in put effective blisters. Then the contents of the true blister, they are filled with rich in albumin, whereas the put effective fluid, they are filled with gas and there is no albumin. And on rupturing the true blister, the fluid will escape, but blister remains. But the put effective blister, when it ruptures, Gases escape and blister is no more visible. So summary of this lecture is that we have started discussion on the stage one and we have understood what is the stage one of put infection. And in this, we have discussed the color changes in the marbling, skin slip phenomena and blistering. So thank you very much, take care and we'll continue the topic of put infection in the next lecture. And in the description below, I have given the link for the, all the lectures of the thanatology and other uh, contents they are also discussed. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Allah. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar. Thank you very much.